folks, welcome to this quick video where I want to introduce uh, like how to search for an article to find a particular shift factor, especially if it's a little confusing on how to find a really reliable one or a really good one, okay? So as you get into this, first of all, make sure you read through the directions, make sure you get a good idea of what to do and what not to do by looking at the examples. You look at the slides to help guide you, um, and you also watch the video instructions to kind of go over what exactly we're doing here and also kind of like start thinking, why are we doing this? Why is it beneficial for me to be able to know how to graph demand curves? and also be able to see it in, in the news. So as I let's say I get my own copy of this. This is what you should see when you first start looking at this. And you'll notice that it says in the red part, write the details. So I'm going to write the article name and also the URL link. I'm going to write the explanation for how that article fits that shift factor. So I've done the first one for you, but there are five different shift factors. And you have to find an article that represents each. So obviously, if I find a, an article that talks about popularity, um, like an increase or decrease in, in demand because there's a all of a sudden it's either unpopular or popular. I'm going to make sure that I'm in that right box or the right table for popularity. Please don't give me the wrong articles for wrong shift actors because um, each of these are different. So um, in the orange boxes, I'm going to write the explanation. How does this article that I chose represent this particular shift factor and uh, how would I explain it? Okay, this right here, this explanation box and the drawing part. That's the key to the getting the, the A, okay? So what I need to know from you is, do you know or are you applying your knowledge in a very successful manner? Are you applying your knowledge of this shift factor with this article? And then are you able to draw the, the graph correctly? So for the graph, all you have to do is double click. It's a Google drawing. And then you can either use this line here. You can use a text box, shapes. But if you just want to draw an arrow and then do a text box, that's how I created this stuff here. Or you can just copy and paste it, to be frank, and then draw some arrows either going up or down, okay? So how the heck do I find an article? How the heck do I find an, art an article that talks about income, normal, and inferior goods? So if I'm looking at this and I don't know what this is, that's step one. You have to be able to make sense of this in your own mind. You have to practice some metacognition, be like, what the heck is this? What are some examples that I can relate to? To understand this in my own in my own life and to be able to see it in the world around me. So with income, your desire for expensive products increases when you get a higher job or a higher paying job. Your demand for inferior products increases when you drop an in income. So let's say all of a sudden I got fired from my job or I'm unemployed because of the recession or something. All of a sudden, boom, I might be looking for those inferior products. It's not to say that the quality of them is inferior. It just means that they're not luxurious. They're not expensive. So I might be buying ramen noodles when I'm looking for an inferior product. Um, or I might be looking for a Lambo or a Lamborghini when I finally strike it rich and I have a bunch of money. Or I might buy a house for my mom, whatever. So let's say I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, do I know what this is? And if I can find some examples for this, I can go find an article that hits that example. So that's my first tip for you. If you don't know what it is, find an example that makes sense in your mind. Then go find an article or something in the news that matches that example. So if I'm looking at this and I might say, okay, um, hmm, cars, I need a car. And like a normal car, like a luxurious car would be like, um, a Ferrari and then like an inferior car might be like a used car I see on the lot. Um, so I can either choose between new cars or old cars. And if I get an increase in income, I'm going to buy a new car. If I get, if I, my income drops, then I might get a, a little bit of a cheaper used car. Not to say that they can't go from point A to point B, but they don't have all the bells and whistles that a new car does. So what I'm going to do is because I found an example in my mind, I'm now going to go open up a new tab and I'm going to go to Google news. You can also get it get there by going here to this what we call a waffle or the waffle maker. And you should be able to see it right here. It's got the G and then it's got several colors behind it. But when you get in here, you'll see like a ton of topics that pop up at it you. And, but that's what I like about Google News is it compiles like you get a topic, it compiles like almost every single well-known like our major news outlet that's covering that particular story. So you got You've got like 15 different options to choose from with just one topic. So up here in the search bar, it says search for topics, locations, and sources. I can see different options here. And let's just say I want to think about my example for income. 
So I, I thought about cars. That's how that particular shift factor makes sense to me. My demand for used or new cars changes whenever I get an increase or a decrease in, in, in income. Can I afford the payment? So I'm going to put used cars. I'm just going to type in my example. I'm going to see what pops up when it works. Hmm. Okay, so it's not coming up with anything, either that or my computer's janky. Um, but it's okay if it's a mistake for the first time. Maybe I just need to try a different search term, okay? So if we use cars doesn't work, maybe I'll try in new, new cars. Maybe hit new, more headlines. Um, hmm. Well, it doesn't look like anything is popping up. So let's keep trying again. Okay, so I either thought about new cars or used cars. Maybe I'm thinking about food. Okay, so it's got some, this is what popped up. And it still looks like a majority of the current news is going on. So what should I do next? Um... So, if you encounter this problem, what I want you to do is keep looking. Don't give up after this happens, because this might happen to you. You may get lucky, and all of a sudden, boom, some articles pop up, and then, boom, all you have to do is go look at those specific articles. But if this happens to you and you're using Google News, keep going. Don't stop. Uh, don't stop the, the music, I believe Justin, uh, Justin Timberlake once sang. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in used car news. Uh, and see what pops up. So it looks like top stories. Oh, check this out. So by typing in my example and then just by adding news, uh, I can go through and find a bunch of different news articles that relate to what I'm talking about. So let's go to used car prices skyrocket due largely to chip shortage. It was posted just 20 hours ago, so this is like super recent. And it's by a, a pretty reliable news network. NBC is pretty reliable. Motor.com, I might think, maybe a little bit more of a blog. Car Dealer Magazine may be reliable, but um, I'm not sure. But NBC, Fox, um, other news, major news organizations, those are perfectly fine. Um, just ignore their political bias and what they think. But um, this should do me pretty nicely for thinking about income. So if used car prices skyrocket, meaning that they go higher due to a large, uh, largely to a chip shortage. It, I'm going to read through the article um, for the sake of this video and keeping it short. I'm, I'm not going to do that right now. But if I was only looking at the headline to keep to guide me, if I think that used car prices are going to skyrocket due largely to a chip shortage, that means that for the on the demand side, people who typically have a lower income, who typically go for these inferior goods, these used cars, because maybe they can't afford a new car due to a variety of different reasons, I might think that my demand for used cars, if I'm looking for an inferior product because I have a lower income, is going to drop. Because if I'm if I can only buy and afford a used car, I can't go out and buy them if they're even more expensive than what I thought they would be. So instead of a used truck maybe being like five grand, maybe it's like fifteen or twelve, um, twelve or fifteen. So in that case, I can't afford that. So then my demand for products overall for these uh, used cars would actually dip, okay? They would go down. What that would look like in my product here, or my project, I would have the article name, I'd have used cars prices skyrocket due largely to chip shortage right here. I'd have the product involved, which would be used cars. And then let's see. And if you copy and paste the headline, that's okay. I'm not looking at, like this is not an MLA citation. I'm not looking at APA citations. See, if, even if you copy and paste it, it might get a little janky like that. So I might just say, used car shortage. All right, copy and paste the URL or link. Boom and boom. And so now I've got that there. And then income, normal and inferior goods. You can choose either for this particular one. So let's say I'd say, um, the article talks about how used cars are increasing in price. If I could only afford cheaper 
inferior used cars, my demand for used cars, I'm putting cards, uh, my, my demand for used cars would drop because I couldn't afford the larger prices. All right. So now this would be my explanation, and that is fully sufficient. If you're on my end of the thing and you're looking at this, if I was a teacher and you are the teacher in this classroom, remember, I could look at this and say, boom, this actually makes a lot of sense. This person clearly understands this particular shift factor, and now all they have to do is graph it. So I need to draw the new demand curve. I need to label the axes, and I also need to label D0 and D1. Okay, so what that looks like, if I go here, you'll notice that I have my Y and X axis. This is price. This is quantity. You always remember to draw the L. Mind your P's and your Q's, give me the curve, and then make sure it's the right curve. So demand should always slope downward, it should always have a negative slope. And D0 just means this is the original demand for used cars, and then boom, all of a sudden, because of higher prices, my demand for inferior products, if this is my demand curve, excuse me, let's say I draw it, is not going to go up there. It's going to drop, right? So if there's a drop in demand, it's, the curve is going to move like this. I might move this a little over here just for like cosmetic reasons, just to make it look a little bit neater. But as I get into this, you'll start to see, okay, boom, I can add an arrow showing that it's going down. Let me add another one just, you know, for effect. And then I need to make sure I draw my curve. So I'm just going to go up here with this arrow here so I can just kind of select this, copy, paste. And here is E1. So based on the article and what's going on, economically speaking, the demand for used cars has dropped because the prices have gone up. So demand curve went down, demand went down, save and close, and that is how you do each table. So this shouldn't take you too long. It's more about finding the right article that fits, and it's okay if you make a mistake when you're searching. Don't get frustrated and give up on the first try, or don't be like, uh, don't refuse to turn it in or just don't give up and not finish it because maybe you're having a little difficulty finding the right articles. If that's the case, come find me. I've got articles already queued up and I can um, help you along your way after we try searching first. All right. So if you have any questions for me, want to see me in person, hit, see, hit me up for iPass. I'd love to see you and I look forward to seeing you in class again.